Hey everyone and welcome back to the Greenwich Homestead. So I know I've talked several times about our property and that it was an old school property and that we're in the process of cleaning it up. I've not really shown you what that means. This area is going to get organized. This is a little bit of a project area that we were using. Lots of car parts. Um, we've got over here, there's some farm equipment, cages, a bathtub. Don't ask me how a bathtub got in the middle of a field. Oh yes, and this, this one, this is my favorite. This is a miniature washing machine. <laughs> so this is kind of how it goes every winter when the brush is died down out in the field, we go through the trees and the shrubs and find as much junk as we can and then just bring it up here and wait for the spring where we can have it all hauled off. I did want to throw a disclaimer up right now for those of you who are sensitive to meat issues. Uh, we do talk a little bit about butchering in this video and I do show a butchered animal. It's already been quartered and processed so it doesn't look any different than you would see it on a grocery store shelf. However, I do want to throw that warning up for anyone who may be queasy or not like to see something like that. You feel free to turn away now. So another project I hope to finish this weekend, we are butchering out all of our roosters and some of our extra drakes that we got hatched out last spring. And once they're gone, I can actually adjust my fence. So one of the things that we're doing is repairing the fence in the garden. We put up a temporary one just a little while ago to keep the uh, rodent problem. We have groundhogs. And I'm gonna be doing it up with a much nicer fence with wooden post corners and a little bit higher and stuff like that. I haven't done it yet because we didn't want to take this one down because it has been keeping the roosters out as well. So now that they're going to be gone, I can pull this fence down and we can start measuring and getting set for building the new fence. I wanted to take a moment and talk to you guys a little bit about something that you will face as a homesteader. And that is the decision to cull or butcher your animals. In fact, actually, it's the decision to have livestock animals at all on a homestead. The draw to homesteading for a lot of people is that self-sufficient, self-sustainability, that lifestyle where you can provide for your loved one without having to rely on someone else. There's going to be a point in time where you have to make the decision, can I do this? Can I be a homesteader? Am I going to have to be a vegetarian? Or am I going to be able to take the life that I raised to give nourishment to my family? When you bring livestock into your homestead, that's a decision that you should be thinking about before you ever pay the person for that animal. Is this going to be food? Now, if you want to go out and get a couple pigs and just have them look cute and be spokesman animals for your farm and ambassadors to teach people about pigs, that's awesome. If you can afford to do that, do it. But most of us are looking for a way to simplify life and to support our families. And feeding a large livestock animal for the rest of its life with it not giving anything in return is not always the best investment. Both the chickens and the ducks are here strictly for the purpose of providing eggs. However, I have to hatch my own. It's a decision that I made. And what that means is I'm not able to control what hatches out of those eggs. So if I get a bunch of hens, that's awesome. But if I get a bunch of roosters, I really can't have that. So for the safety of my flock, the continued health of my animals, and the overall well-being of my farm, those roosters unfortunately become food. It is a hard decision to make. It shouldn't ever be easy to take a life. If you're going to be a homesteader, it's something that you have to think about before you ever buy the animal. What is the purpose of this creature, this life that I am bringing into my care and taking responsibility for? What is it going to give me in return? Is it just companionship? How much is that going to cost in the long run? Is it here for food? And what do I need to do for myself to make me ready and prepared to be able to butcher that animal when and if the time comes? A lot of people want to get into this lifestyle and it's a question that they do have to ask themselves. Should I buy a livestock animal whose purpose is to feed me if I'm not able to make that decision? There's nothing wrong with saying no. It's okay to have a homestead and just raise a garden. You can always trade a bushel of food for a little bit of meat from the farmer down the road. So for obvious YouTube reasons, I'm not going to show the butchering part. Basically, we've already butchered, we've quartered and skinned, and we're just gonna 
walk through some of the steps that I did. Because the ducks are extremely difficult to pluck, so what I do for stock birds filling the freezer are I quarter them up, so we got the leg quarters, we got the wing portions, and then we got the breasts. Right now we've got them sitting on a little rack to dry off a little bit before we pack them into the vacuum freezer bags. It just makes it a little easier. Now the other thing I've done with all of the carcasses, which I make stock out of. So right now I have two pots of duck stock going. And basically I just take the carcasses, I put them in the pots with some carrots and a whole onion and a little bit of salt. And then that gets boiled. We pack all of our chickens in the vacuum seal freezer bags. It just makes them last a little bit longer in the freezer. So this is a whole chicken going in. And he's really good at this. So I've pulled out all the pieces. This is all the meat and the bones and the carrots and onions. And I'm gonna go through this and get all the bones out and put all the good stuff back into the soup stock. All right, so now that my stock has cooked down, for 24 hours. I am putting it into jars and it'll get processed in the canner. When processing meat stock, you have to remember to treat it like meat. Don't just think to yourself, oh, it's just a broth, I don't need to do that long. It needs to be processed through there just like you would if you were canning meat, which means 90 minutes under whatever pressure is relevant to your elevation. So for our elevation, we use 10 pounds of pressure. As you can see, when using a pressure canner, unlike a water bath canner, you do not have to cover your jars. You just have to make sure that there's enough water in there that it's not going to boil dry during the process. Um, I usually put about two or three inches in. For me personally, it's always nice to see how the things that would have normally been considered excess or waste or just unneeded become food and something useful to us here on our homestead. So this weekend has been a great lesson on the reminders of life as a homesteader. It's definitely not always that glorified, fancy farm life that you see on TV, and it's always gonna have decisions that are difficult to make. However, you have to keep in mind that all the things that you're doing are for the benefit of you and your family, I do hope that everybody learned a little bit from this video. I hope that people take away the message to consider when they're looking into farm animals, what is the purpose of that animal? Again, there's nothing wrong with having farm animals as pets. Just be prepared before you purchase them, what that's gonna mean, how long you're gonna have them, and what the costs are. Do the research and make sure that before you bring a life into your care, that you know what's going to be required of you if you're going to keep it long term. I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope you learned a little bit from it. And I look forward to hearing about your guys' experience. Do you raise any livestock? Do you have them as pets? Or are you looking to learn how to butcher your own food? Don't forget to put, hit the thumbs up and give us a like. And if you really like what we're doing here on the farm and want to follow along, especially to see a bit more of the farm cleanup, Go ahead and hit the bell for notifications to make sure that you see whenever we make a new video post. Once again, thanks for watching, and don't forget to get your hands dirty.